were in Medina helping the migrators those who are known as the Ansar when Allah Ta'ala mentioned their promise of uh, entering paradise and mentioned that uh, he had uh, that Allah Ta'ala is pleased with them then Allah Ta'ala mentioned saying and those who followed them correctly in righteousness so the shaykh says so as for the hypocrites that lived amongst the Prophet and those that and the, the, the days after as for those re, the rebels the Kharijites the Khawarij who lived in that era are they considered to be only for, for the fact that for the token that they lived in those first three generations are they the Salaf the pious predecessors that we must take a, an example from the Sheikh says no what is, what is meant is to follow those people who correctly took an example from the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba and we follow their way and this is the reason why Allah Ta'ala said in this verse adding the word bi ihsan correctly, righteously following them correctly and righteously so this is a very important word which restricts the meaning and shows that Allah Ta'ala is praising the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and those who correctly followed them, not those who lived around them claiming to be Muslims or uh, were uh, Muslims at that time from those stray sects. So we understand from this the Shaykh says that the Salafi way, it is that way which the, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ received and took from the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, and they acted upon it. This is the meaning of the Salafi way or the Salafi methodology or uh, Salafiya. And then after that, those people who came after the Sahaba, they took that message and that methodology and that way from the Sahaba and they acted upon it. This is the way of the Salaf that we are talking about. So whoever says that this path of the Salafis is a new innovative path then this is wrong indeed Salafiyya is none other than the revelation sent down by Allah Ta'ala to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so the Salafis therefore are not a, a partisan group rather they are the followers of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the followers of his companions this was the, uh, where the Shaykh stopped and then I asked the Shaykh one or two questions and the Shaykh says the first question was with regards to Muslims who uh, live in non-Muslim lands what should their behavior be even though they uh, haven't physically signed any contract themselves but their presence in this lands what does it necessitate? The Shaykh says that the Prophet Muhammad lived amongst the people of falsehood for 13 years in Mecca and they tortured him and they behaved very badly towards him until Allah Ta'ala gave him permission to migrate. So some of the companions migrated and then the Prophet migrated. And when he went as a, uh, an emigrant to Medina, the Jews were already living there and established there. So the Prophet ﷺ and the Jews, they drew up contracts of peace that they would live side by side fulfilling those contracts and not breaking those contracts and when and only after those various parties the Shaykh is referring to the historical reports of the life of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina when those various groups and uh, parties broke their contracts with the Prophet ﷺ, and now it was permissible for the Prophet ﷺ not to uphold his side of the contract anymore Allah didn't command him to fight them rather he commanded him to prepare to fight to make preparations so the obligation which was uh, which led me to the next question with the Shaykh and that was so what is the obligation of the Muslims in the non-Muslim lands if they are fought against and if they are uh, oppressed 
The Shaykh says that if they have been prevented from praying, if the women have been prevented from wearing hijab, if they have been prevented from attending the Jummah prayer, in that situation, if a, if a person is able to leave that land and migrate, then he should. And if he is not in a position to do so, in that situation when he's been prevented and oppressed, then he tries his best to read the Qur'an privately and secretly, and he prays privately and secretly, and he distances himself as much as he can from the society, even if he has to live on the roots of trees and dies in that state. And the Shaykh is referring obviously to some of the notions of the Prophet ﷺ in that regard. But then the Shaykh continues and says, but if they do not show enmity towards your religion, and, and yet they leave you to act upon your religion, they, leave the, they let the women wear their hijab, and they let the men pray in the masjids and establish the Jummah and the likes, then this is, this is okay to live in that situation. A person treats them well and does not fight against them as has